So we created these possible titles for whether it's going to be a blog posting that we're going to do, because we don't even have the list of possible communication channels, but you can imagine this. And so whether we're going to send it on a blog, or put it out in an email, or post it on Facebook, or create a commercial for this thing, these are just different ways we can communicate these kind of overarching messages. So the owners, the first title theme ideas came up with the idea that owners are really dedicated to their winery. They're up early, the first ones to get there, they're the last ones to leave. You know, whether you're a, a one-person show or a ten-person show or, or more, you're the, you're the folks that are behind the battle. Um, winemakers sort of a message here. In Iowa, we chal we're challenged by high acidity with our grapes. I mean, in a lot of cases, that's a really great thing. We can make some amazing wines. And so how do we, how do we combat the acidity and how do we craft a really great wine as a result? Um, and so it can funnel down to specific stories. Um, why you're important to us under the honors frame here, why winemaking isn't all science but art. And so there's a lot of different ways you can tackle these issues. So, you know, and then as we as we think about articulating this on down, so that, you know, the Joe Swampy Nelson story, I, we, enjoy, we enjoy that. Uh, but let's say in our particular situation, in our imaginary winery, we've got, we've got this, this Joe Nelson guy that maybe is a local character or whatever. And so maybe we have Joe Nelson Day. So you can think about it in, in, in a lot of different ways. So perhaps you can have a day that celebrates something that is unique to your location, unique to your history. There are many, many ways that you can articulate those concepts. We don't have to be locked into electronic print. Right. That sort of thing. And because our winery is on the Mississippi, we, we are, we're doubly blessed because we have these really great grape varietals. Uh, Frontenac, St. Pepin, float up the river a little bit. You come to a town called Frontenac. You come to a town called St. Pepin. And we have the historical connection between the people who were there, the original explorers, and the towns and the grapes, and our story within the winery. So this is a really great way to, to, to tie in the historical perspective of our community with, the, with our products and our overarching theme. In the wine education thing, you know, I know a, a constant challenge is you know, in the wine tasting room, do you, do you describe it as a like a whatever? You know, I'm not a big fan of that, but then I, you know, my, my winery is imaginary too, so it's easy for me to have an opinion. But in, in, in perhaps in wine education, being able to explain why our wines are not like a Merlot, not why they're not like a Chardonnay, why we don't use that language, okay? That would be an example of a wine education. So when we get to this part of our process with the with our hospital client, we had done what you guys had just done. We put the calendar out and transcribed it to another worksheet, and then we actually brought it on to this spreadsheet here to see how it can all fit in together. So our next step was doing just that, Oops. doing just that, bringing our annual plan activities <coughs> to see how we could connect them to the owner's story, to see how we could connect them to the wine education and the stories of Mississippi and sense of place. So, you now not everything you do has to necessarily line up perfectly because there's going to be things that you just do and because you've always done them and it may not fit in with the overarching message of your winery and that's fine. You're going to have things like that. But as, as much as we can, then we got this really great cohesive message um, that we can propagate.